Michael Phelps, the GOAT. The greatest of all time, the greatest swimmer of all time, the greatest Olympian of all time, the most decorated Olympian of all time. It's undeniable I'm out of breath. He's got a lot of records. He's still got a lot of records, and he's got one world record, one long course meter world record still on the books, and it's officially the longest standing world record in swimming history. And I'm 42.7% sure that Leon Marchand intentionally didn't break the 400 IM world record that is owned by Michael Phelps at French Nationals because he wanted the GOAT. He wanted Phelps to officially have the world record for the longest standing world record before he goes over to Fukuoka, Japan for the 2023 World Championships and potentially takes out the last individual world record that Michael Phelps still has on the world record books. But there's more records out there than just world records. There's US Open records, which I think are incredibly weird, but it's the fastest time that has been done on US soil. I almost said US Open soil on US soil or in US water, if you want to go that route. There's American records, which I think make a lot more sense because it's the fastest time that's been done by an American. Pretty straightforward. But what's not straightforward is the way that these two records interact. You can have a US Open record that's faster than an American record, and inversely, which if you watch the channel, I'm going to make that word kind of a mainstay on this channel. I like the way it sounds, I like the way it operates within the flow of the video. Inversely, you can have an American record that's faster than a US Open record. Very confusing. But this video and what Thomas Hellman did in the 200 Butterfly isn't about a US Open record. It's about actually pretty much every other record that is possible. Uh, it's about Michael Phelps' 1516 national age group record in the 200 butterfly of a 154.58, which when it was set was a 1516 national age group record. It was the American record, and it was actually the world record swim that also won him world championship gold in Fukuoka, Japan in 2001 at the World Swimming Championships. That's right. Fukuoka, Japan, the site of this year's 2023 World Swimming Championships that Thomas Hillman just qualified for, just booked his ticket to go out and compete for the United States of America for after breaking the national age group record set by Michael Phelps of 154.58. Hellman went 154.54. He clipped it. He took 0.04 off Michael Phelps' national age group record. And while it was a huge swim, it didn't come as a huge surprise to me after what Hellman did at the 2022 Winter Junior National Championships, where he went 44 and 100 fly, 140 and a 200 fly, and a plethora of other times that probably had college coaches and athletic directors throughout the country shipping him, his family and friends, cold, hard cash and boxes with goggles and caps just to try to get this guy to commit so they don't have to swim against him in the NCAA because he is going to be an absolute force if he doesn't go professional and make $400 million a year after what he might do in Paris in 2024 now. But back to Hellman's swim, there was a lot that went down in this one. He came into the event seated second behind Carson Foster, who I had as a heavy favorite going into this event. But behind Hellman was a veteran class of 155s, a very deep race in the fight for what a lot of people thought would just be a fight for second place. With a whole slew of 155s waiting in the wings to try to snipe that ticket, that plane ticket for the 200 butterflyers from the USA to Fukuoka, Japan, waiting in the wings, a lot of people probably would have thought that Hallman might have locked up under the pressure, locked up under the lights and the, on the big stage in front of everyone. But based on what Thomas Hellman DM'd me when we were talking about my 200 IM and my race strategy to just kind of go out fast, when he said something along the lines of just send it like Leon does, referring to Leon Marchand, who kind of rewired our brains and made us rethink the way that we swim short course yards races when at the 2023 NCAA championships, he kind of just showed us that his game plan was just to sprint until he couldn't sprint anymore and just see what happened after that. So knowing that, knowing that that kind of strategy was in Hellman's brain, when I saw him go out 5420 in the 100 and 2546 at the 50, it wasn't a huge shock but it was shocking. If that makes sense, we think the same way, and I'm I'm very sorry that you think the same way that I do because my brain is a scary place. If you didn't think the same way and that was really confusing, then I apologize for the amount of confusion and pain that I have caused your brain at this moment in time. But Hellman settled into the third 50 where a lot of people with not a ton of international team trial race experience, whatever you want to call it, might have freaked out and continued to press the pedal down and burnt out at the end. He split a 30.30 on the third 50 and then swam the gutsiest final 50 that I've seen in a long time going 30.05 four to run down the field and lock up second place which this led to the best part of this race what happened after he touched the wall when Carson Foster realized that Thomas Hellman had either one made the Fukuoka 2023 national team the team USA team that we're sending over there or two 
broke the 15 16 national age group record set by michael phelps maybe he noticed that both of them happened what we got after that swim are two nuggets two little nuggets of media that swimming fans should cherish forever number one we got a huge quick hand raise into a fully extended double arm water slap selly from thomas hailman which i think is one of the best we've seen from the meet so far and number two arguably better when thomas hailman beat scotty buff in the hunter butterfly at short course junior nationals he put his hand on scotty buff's head because i think they both looked up at the clock and were just kind of like in awe and a little bit of shock at how fast they had just went and kind of forgot how to interact socially but after this 200 butterfly, we got a full circle moment with some incredible still frames of Carson Foster doing the same thing to Thomas Hailman. And he, while that is happening, Thomas Hailman kind of does the classic and somewhat weird thing we all do when we're tired for some reason. We put our head down in the water and kind of like blow bubbles. So at this moment, when you combine the two of them, we get these hilarious still frames of Carson looking like he's trying to take Hellman out like Jason Bourne in an aquatic remake before they head off to Fukuoka. Now, of course, Carson was absolutely fired up for Hellman. He raised Thomas's hand up in the air. He gave him the nod on social media. And the U.S. is sending two studs and the 200 butterfly to Japan to try to bring home some hardware. And I try to stay neutral on this channel, kind of, sometimes. But go get them, boys. Like the video before I end the video. Hurry. I'm going to end it. Don't forget to like it. Congrats on the record, Thomas. You're a beast. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.